In this video, we're going to discuss contact consolidation. I'm going to start out by saying this video is used for training purposes only, that no real students or data is being shared in this video. Any likeness to any real student or person is purely coincidental, as this is a fake set of data in a database used for training only. So when it comes to contacts, we know that there are lots of times where whether you're allowing parents to create their own contact record inside of the parent portal when they're creating their parent access accounts or just not searching properly when going to search for a contact and adding a new contact that we can end up with duplicates. What are the best and most efficient ways to clean up duplicates and what are the pitfalls where we have to watch for things to go awry when consolidating duplicate contact records? So a couple of things that you can do. One is how can you search for duplicates and clean them versus if I just find a random duplicate and want to do the internal contact consolidation, how would that go? So what I want to do is first start out with some reports that we have over in level data that will help us to discover potential contacts that have been duplicated that we can work with. So I want to draw your attention to the contacts reports tab inside of level data. Now some of these reports make sense and some of them do not. For example, contacts with matching addresses. Well, if you have a married mother and father of a student, of course, they're going to have most likely matching addresses, and that would not really key off it being a duplicate contact. Some of the reports that I prefer running are going to be contacts with matching names, contacts with matching names and streets, matching name and email address, or matching name and phone number. I like to run these reports to see who triggers as a possible duplicate so that we can then go through the consolidation process. Now, sometimes the reports will start with a run because it does have to go against so much data that you don't want these processes running all of the time as it could cause performance issues. So level data has it built in where some of them key automatically and some have to be run. So if I click the run button, I do see that I'm getting one potential set of contacts with a matching name and phone number, which could typically lead to a duplicate record. So I'm going to hit the list button and I see that I sure enough have two contacts um, that are unique that possibly could be one. Now for each one of these it does not mean that they are duplicates. It's a possible duplicate that you need to investigate on. So here I'm showing I have two contacts. The names are slightly different on each of the contact records but they do have the exact same phone number. So if we do our due diligence we would know right off the bat if we were the ones entering this data if this was a true duplicate or are there two Stacy Roysters with a slightly different variation of name who have the same phone number. So you would need to look at that. If you determine that these are in fact duplicate records that need to be merged, maybe one contact was put on one student and a different contact was created for another student, we're going to click the consolidate contacts link here. Let the page load and we want to look at these two. So I have determined that yes, it looks like we do have a duplicate record um, and we want to merge this data together. Now here is where we must pay very careful attention and where we see some of the biggest issues after consolidation. If you've ever gone through this consolidation of contacts process here and then the next day you get a phone call or maybe a few minutes afterwards you get a phone call from a parent saying hey I just lost my access to my student in the parent portal where well, here's what we need to make sure we pay attention to. When you have multiple contact records like this you must choose one to be a master. So I can have the master chosen as this one or this one. You want to look at the data that is inside of these different records and the one you want to pay attention to is either of those records marked to have account access. That means they have a current parent portal access where they are looking at their students data. Best practice is that when you go to consolidate these contacts to ensure that the master record that you leave is the one that has the account access on there because if I were to choose this one down here and consolidate them it's saying hey take all the data up here move it down here but that does not come with it so another way I want to look at it is saying which one has this make that my master here bring any of this up into here now you do have two choices you can say consolidate all data or you can just keep this master record only 
most of the time what we're wanting to do is consolidate because maybe this record's on one student, this record is on another student, this will bring both students in, and it will bring all of the data in and you can determine once the record gets merged what to keep and what to get rid of. So to complete this consolidation, what I am going to do is choose this to be the master because again, it's the one with the account access in the portal. I'm going to hit review. And basically it takes both parts of everything from that original page and merges it together. Now with the names, it's only going to bring the name that was in that one that you chose to leave as a master. So notice it was a Stacy Royster, whereas the one that I merged into it was Stacy Lee Royster. So if I need to update to give the most full name I possibly can, I want to put that back in there. Um, it is active. My web account is intact. I'm still connected to that one student. Now notice that both of them did have a phone number on here and they are different. One was labeled as daytime, one is work. So I can at this point get rid of the one that I don't need that is the duplicate. So I can say yes, I want to get rid of that phone number. Um, you want to check your order to make sure anything that might need to be in a specific order for your call out systems and such is still intact. Um, here again, I have two email addresses. These are different so I would leave both of them. I have one address. So once I'm happy with this, I can then hit submit consolidation and it's going to warn me and say, are you sure? Because once you put these together, notice they do have two ID records, that other one's going to be gone and everything will be mapped up under this one. If you are 100% okay with that, then you click okay. And now that duplicate has been cleaned up. So that is one way of cleaning up dupl duplicates is to identify them within these reports that we do have in level data so that you can then go through and know which ones need to clean. Another way that you can clean them is if you happen to stumble upon because um, let's actually go back to the data validation. Now that I have cleaned that up, and notice that I'm going to get zeros, zeros, and zeros across the board. So no potentials that it was able to come up with. However, in my day-to-day -day work, sometimes I run across names in looking at contacts and find duplicates that the report does not pick up. So it just so happens that I do know that I have a duplicate of Bobby Royster inside of here. So another way that I can clean up these duplicates is from this front loading page. Click select by hand and I only want to work with these two records here because I noticed as I was working with my students that I had two of these and I have this consolidate contacts option here. So when I click the consolidate contacts, it's again going to give me that same type of information and decide which one do I want to leave as the master to merge these together. So in this case, again, I'm looking at that access account and I want to make sure the one that has the checkbox is the one I leave as the master. I do not want to do this. This is a bad no-no. If I merge these together, then the record that he had for the parent portal is going to be gone. So I want to make sure that I choose that one. I'm going to consolidate all the data, hit review, and it takes us through the same steps as we do, uh, have done earlier. So I have the name intact. I have the web account address intact. I have one phone number. Now, why this time did it actually just put one phone number instead of both of them on the records? Because here they have the same type. In the previous merge, one was a daytime, one was a home time. So you have to choose which one you want to leave it as. If the data matches exactly, it does truly merge everything together. If there's any difference in the two pieces of data, it will bring all of it in here for you to choose which one you want to keep. I can then submit the consolidation. Again, it's going to warn me and say, are you sure you want to consolidate these into a single record because this one's going to be deleted? And the answer to that is yes. So that is how we navigate our contact consolidation. And it's the nature of data where we know we're always going to chase these duplicates that are that are going to be entered. There's another video on the YouTube channel that will go through and show you how to correctly attach contacts to our students to make sure that you're searching in a way so that you don't end up creating a duplicate. So I highly suggest taking a look at that video as well. But I hope this helps in seeing the most efficient way to clean up your contacts.